Timmy, you won the 97 title. I think you've told me a few times your bonus was 25,000 from Suzuki. No, no, my no, 97 was uh it was 50,000. Oh. oh. so um, Danny's was 25. Year, mine was 25. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the, the year before mine was um in 96, 95 or 96 it was only 25. So, yeah, it was 50,000 won the championship. For, for about 30 years Suzuki just paid their 125 guys 30k a year. With like 25k bonuses. Yeah, I didn't even get that. I, my first contract was 18 grand, 2,500 dollars to win, and 25 grand a bonus. I, 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 when I was working doing agent thing with Grant and Bernard, yeah. I looked at their contract. Basically, you could just add a zero to everything I was doing to what they were doing later. And I'm like, yeah. damn it, I was yeah. we were born too soon, Tim. They, they uh, Suzuki just, I mean, the number of great guys and a number of racers that jumped on a Suzuki 125 over the years. Yeah, you know, and started there. And they're they're, they're fire breathers, weren't they, Tim? Yeah, they were. I mean, my first salary there was was twenty four thousand, and uh, obviously I was excited. I got my, got to do my own gear and stuff too. So, um, but yeah, that ninety five Suzuki was so good. Like it was, I could get on podiums before, but then all of a sudden I won a couple of Supercrosses. But that's, I didn't really change anything that I had done. It's just the bike was and the equipment was better. So, um, yeah, that that was the bike to be on back then. So you were there ninety four. Ninety four. I was. Um... Like 90, 91 was factory, 92, 93 was kind of supported. Okay, yeah. uh, they'd give me bikes and, you know, I could sell them and stuff like that. Still kind of got some good, decent support. Yep. And then 94, I think I was more, um, I think I, I was kind of on my own a little bit more, but still yeah. they were helping me out kind of back door. In 95, I was pretty much FNS Suzuki out of Troy, yeah. Ohio. And then you were like, they hired this. Rossini kid for factory Suzuki. <laughs> yeah, and, and Timmy was. I think you know my dad kind of helped you know a little bit. You know, I think I think that was Ramsey. Ramsey kind of was coming at the same time yeah. and helping uh, Bundy with stuff. And uh, you know, yeah. back then it was you know box fans, so everybody yeah. was working together and kind of yeah. all just you know we weren't so separated as they are nowadays. Yeah, yeah, it was it was definitely a totally different environment. Um, Leroy was my mechanic, and uh, he obviously was. I think it was Phil Lawrence's mechanic the year before. Then he was mine, and then. After me was I think Pastrana, so he had a, a slew of really, but, you know, pretty pretty good run, good, good riders. Those are the days though. Like you look at you two guys, you you won the Supercross titles, right? And those are the days where like, yeah, we'll just see you on Saturday. Like just see you at the race. Like if you're <laughs> Roger DeCosta or whatever, like just see you Saturday. We don't know what you're doing during the week. We don't know what your program is. We've got you some practice bikes, so we we hope you're riding them, <laughs> and then we'll yeah, just my, see you on the weekends. Yeah, my in the beginning they just sent me some stock bikes, and I had actually had Rossini actually build my bikes for practice. So it wasn't until like right before the season they gave us like you know the you know race cylinder or this or that. Yeah. So, uh, I don't really remember like uh, an organized test schedule. <laughs> I remember one time we went to Ezra's, um, and it was a bunch of us went all went, but I don't know that it was that organ. It was like we had the cylinders A B C. Yeah, just pick them. That yeah. was yeah. That's what I was telling Steve. Same thing. You you have these many things to try, and that's what, like my first year 250 Supercross. We tested Supercross at Adelanto. Our track <laughs> track was sand. Yep. You know, here's a here's a couple heads. Here's a cylinder. A couple pipes. What do you like? Okay, we'll see you. We'll see you in, in uh, at the first round. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Like you look at the the time and the resources now, for you know if you took you took the 2023. Uh, Denny Stevenson or Tim Ferry, which Jordan Smith or, you know, somebody, RJ Hampshire, somebody's going to show up at the races right now. They're structured. They're, they're, everything's programmed. Testing never ends. Yeah. Right? Every Testing day. never ends. You live with the team. Right. And which would have been nice. I would have so loved different. that. Yeah. Well, a little bit maybe. But. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was different times. But, yeah, I don't, I don't remember. I remember Denny always coming. I wasn't sure what year he was on Suzuki, but he, him and Budman would always come down around Daytona. Daytona Gator back, and then I was living with Tishner at the time, so they're always there for a few weeks, and then oh boy, yeah, they tried to they tried to derail me a little bit, but I, I kept my head down. <laughs> I remember, <laughs> I don't remember what year it was. Uh, I crashed in the first turn at Gainesville, and I thought I broke my wrist. Mm -hmm. I got a huge hematoma on it, and I ran to the hospital quick to get an X-ray, but I was like, man, we're going to Tishner's. We're having a huge party at Tishner's Sunday night. <laughs> I got to get to the party. So I remember going to the emergency room. I'm like, let's get this thing x-ray. We got to go. Yeah, we got to go. And they told me and it was, the x-rays were negative. My dad's with me and stuff. And he's like, okay, well, let's go back to the hotel. I'm like, nope, I'm heading to uh, Clearwater. We're going to go hang out at Tishner's. And uh, we're going to raid some Hunch a Punch. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and party for a couple of days. And, uh, and I think Timmy was there as well for it. And Timmy's like. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was, I was renting a room from, from Tishner back then for $100 a month. Um, 
and I was living there. He was going back and forth to Japan at the time, but oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, yeah he was. Yeah, he was kind of like the first, like my first kind of mentor that kind of, yeah, you know, kind of brought me in. And then Bud Man actually did a lot of stuff where he would. A lot of times he didn't have a bike, so I would. He would go riding with me, and he would kind of help coach me. So, um, it's kind of it's it's, it's kind of funny. Yeah. I'm on the phone now talking about this stuff. You know what? I I've often I I said this to somebody. Oh, I have Tishner's helmet in studio. Uh, Right there, that twelve, right? The oh, BFE. Yeah. Yep. So someone was like, "Hey, who, who's, <clears throat> whose helmet is that?" I'm like it's Tishner's, and they're like, "Huh? Yeah, I heard the name." Like, and I'm just like, <laughs> "I'm like, dude, Tishner was good. Like, he was national number six. I mean, he earned that number." I feel like if Tishner had gotten off Suzuki and like Cowie or Honda got him, he could have won. Ronnie was awesome. Ronnie, uh, Ronnie's peak. Like, in that year that he was six, the dude led Miami forever. Um, Crashing the triple. Yeah, like, I feel like Tishner is really underrated as a rider. Well, and I think he, you know, so now when I look back at it, I want to say maybe at like 22 years old, he went to Japan because he had such a big deal to go over there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he, it was like he couldn't turn it down, so he just left and went over there, I think. I want to say he was making he was making a couple hundred grand over there. I'm making twenty four thousand. Right. Um, but uh, so he went over there, and it was it was it was the right move. It's funny that we talk about this. Suzuki going into '96 offered me the same twenty four thousand, and I won two Supercrosses. I broke my jaw, um, so I missed the rest of them. I won some motos outdoors, won an overall. So they offered me the same thing the next year, and then and me and um, actually I went to Big Ron's. Me and Big Ron like hand wrote a letter to, um, I think to Tosh okay, about Tosh. why I need why I why I needed a raise, and he helped me actually write this letter. Yeah, and um, I sent it to him, and uh, they gave me fifty thousand the next year, so I was pumped. Oh wow! So you, they yeah, doubled so your they doubled, doubled your money. They yeah. doubled my money. Yeah, to fifty thousand. And 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 Huckabuck and Big Ron was is awesome. Uh, one, yeah, of the, one of the coolest all time. Yeah. And then the fact you got Tosh to break, I hear stories from my dad about Tosh, you know, obviously. Yeah. And he was, he's, he's old school Japanese, you know what I mean? Like, yep. fuck you. Like, this is the way we're going to do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, he, and he's with his uh, broken English and Japanese accent, but it just, a, just a badass, right. you know, you want to do well for him because he just, he commanded respect and yeah, you're like, yeah. all right, man, yeah. well, I don't want to, I don't want to let this guy down because right. he might have me killed. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, could be a yeah, samurai yeah. death if I don't perform for yeah. this Japanese company. <laughs> death, by, death by samurai. <laughs> yeah. Timmy, do you remember uh, Mount Morris? The year Budman broke his jaw, and we ended up at some bar there in Morgantown, and we were playing Thumper. Oh, yeah. And Budman yeah, these guys, Budman broke his jaw, like, but he told his wife, you know, I'm going to tell, I don't give a shit. Yeah. He was going home because he broke his jaw, literally. So yeah. he had his mouth almost wired shut, but it wasn't wired, but he could drink beer through a straw. Okay. And we're playing like a. I don't. I don't. I don't actually remember that that he was, had broken his jaw though. Yeah, he crashed. I think through the uh, rollers down through the hill, maybe. But I remember. What he year had, is this? What are we talking? Got about? it. I. I don't even remember what you were been racing at that time. Um, I, I don't even. I'm not sure. I. I do remember him breaking his jaw, and uh, I just don't remember what year it was. I, I don't remember this time, but. But it was um, only the first time. I the only time I ever played Thumper. You know, with Thumper. Where no, you're, you're, I don't a, even know what that it's is. It's a big table. Okay. And you're, everybody's smacking the table. You know, da 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 da. da and you're like, why do we play this game? It's called Thumper. Let's play to get fucked up. And then we all slam beers. I don't really know the point of the game. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But <laughs> that's the first time. Great I heard, game. It's a college town, so okay. maybe somebody got us playing in there. Yeah, you know, Davy. The, probably Davy did. At a college bar, and there's literally 20 of us around this table. Okay. And uh, and I remember Timmy being with us, and and Timmy always very you know kind yeah. of reserved and quiet. And, yeah. I saw a new side of Timmy that day. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that's when I think we became Red Dog right there. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, Red, Red Dog started in '94 actually with Budman. That might have been it then, because well, Budman was always good to give by yeah. nicknames like J Bone. I think. Oh, it, I thought Nate Dog gave yeah. you the name Red Dog. No, no, Budman gave it to me in '94. Oh, okay. Um, Red Dog. It might have been '94. Because I, I, oh yeah, because I used to I take him riding and. Uh, so I'd always make him listen to like Snoop Dogg, and I had these cassettes in my in my car, or CDs, I think it was cassettes maybe. Cassettes. And, uh, and he always liked rock and roll music, so I was I was driving as my truck, so I always made him listen to like Snoop Dogg and stuff. <laughs> and uh, so then he started calling me Red Dog because I had red hair. So that's kind of where the Red Dog name came from. Uh, Master P, so. dude, you used to love Master P back in the day. <laughs> oh Good yeah, God, dude, you loved yourself yeah. some somebody, Master P. Somebody, I think JT sent me that one of those things on Instagram the other day. I actually follow him on Instagram. Yeah, 